Safer6.co.uk Sponsors of The Haze Hour And we are live here, yeah. live in the studio on Thursday night, as ever was. It is the 10th of October. It is 9 o'clock on Thursday night. And, as ever, I'm joined by my friend Keith Herbert from Next Door, who's been to a carol concert that turned out to be a Harvest <laughs> Festival tonight. Oh, God. <laughs> a slip of the tongue. Pardon? Uh. Where's that far? <laughs> I can't talk about slips of the tongue, good lord, man. Yes, what do you think it is? Anybody would think whatever we're enjoying ourselves, we can't be having that. And, and, and tonight we'll have a special guest in video. In video, we have Collie. It's a cross between Cat and Holly, so we're calling her Collie. Collie Fella. Collie. <laughs> <laughs> you alright, Chris? I am, Caddy. I am, Caddy. <laughs> Can I just change the subject a minute? If you must. I've often wondered why do you always tell them the date? Well, it's so that if anybody's watching, you know, we record this and it goes up onto YouTube. Yes. Do you know about YouTube? Uh, from what you told me, yes. Right. Well, yeah. you, YouTube is a vast, repo a vast repository of video. Right. And people go and watch video on there, so we call it the video on demand. So right. we always we always try and kind of give the date so that if I forget to put it in the title or it's not in the description, then if somebody's watching it, at least they know when it was recorded. Well, thank you for that detailed explanation and clarification. That's it's uh, not not a problem, I dear boy. I understand that now. There you go. That's that's why we yeah. do it. It's so that everybody knows when it was recorded. And apparently, cat, you're freaking people out. <laughs> I'm freaking myself out. <laughs> It does look really marvellous. Are you going to be all, all computer and stuff like that? <laughs> I'm working on all kinds of things in the background here. That's, you never know what's coming next. Yes. Oh, uh, uh, Lamental says I should I should tell you that there's no porn on YouTube. Really? No oh. porn on YouTube. Right. So. That that I'm I'm pleased to hear that. There you go. No porn on YouTube, which. I think is a massive shame, <laughs> <laughs> frankly. <laughs> but you know, I'd record. Never, no, shut up, David. Or you'll get in trouble if your wife's watching. And this is where she signs into chat and you says, "I am, and you are." Oh God, I. All right. Yes, right. absolutely right. Now we've got a new visitor from Norway tonight, Lena Marie Popper Torsen, who's just said there's hardly a lack of porn on the internet, though, which leads me to believe that Norway is the place to go if you want to know about stuff like that. So there you go. There you go. <laughs> Mitch Dog said there's porn on the internet. Who knew? <laughs> so a visit the That's fields. a really dirty laugh, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> I've been learning off Andy son. Oh, he's got the dirtiest laugh in the... In the oh, Lamental's going to be back in five minutes. <laughs> You're an optimist, mate. 35 seconds if you're lucky. Um, where was I at? What we're going to be covering tonight... Um, talking about the Vikings now. Or is he going to a Viking men's club, is he? <laughs> There's loads of them about. Um, tonight, 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 we're going to be talking about this. And you might not know what that is. That's a squip. Um, and we'll, we'll, we'll be having a bit of a look at the squip. It arrived late yesterday. Um, and I've been playing with it since then. So we'll, we'll, we'll see what that's like. Keith's been going into bricks and mortar shops and we'll be talking about that which is interesting and he and Kat have been watching some television not not together you understand in, in separate houses and stuff like that um, and do you do you know what happened on Tuesday obviously not well so I, <laughs> I, I, I didn't catch the vote uh, I'll, did. I'll bring you up to speed on that um, and then we're going to have a look at the, at the squip. We'll catch up on the Aspire. We're going to catch up on the 134 and also on the VTR. It's going to be an action-packed show tonight. And we'll try and get this all together as one. And that show is called 123 The Here's Hour.
and we're back in the room and live. Sorry, Chris? Uh, nothing. Okay. Nothing. I was being facetious. Were you? Or as, as when I was, a, I used to be a teacher, you know, and one of the kids were given a, a reading test to, to see whether he could read, and that was facious. Right. Facetious. Facious. That's facious, that was. He had a hell of a job with Ellie Mossonary. <laughs> yes, I don't remember when you taught. Do you? Um, no, I mustn't. Mm, right. It's going back a few years, like. But there you go. There you go. Um, yeah. So, uh, why tell me this about the one show, you two, because I've missed out on most of this and I'm not entirely certain what was going on. Did you see it by accident, Chris, or did you know it was going to be on? I didn't know it was going to be on. I mean, I, I watched the one show so that I can sit and moan about it night after night after night. It's one of my pet grumbles. All right. But um, I'd been having me little snooze after me tea and uh, woke up and the damn thing was still on. So I heard them mention that they were going to be looking at e-cigarettes and I thought, oh, not like the last time. Never mind, I'll watch it. And they had, now you know the guy's name, Rob Gillen. Little. 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 Yeah. Rod Little. He was wandering about with a lookalike, um, which he obviously didn't want to be using because he kept referring to his beloved cigarettes. Yes, he did, yes. Um, and that annoyed me for a start. I thought, he's not taking this report seriously at all um, and the doctor cons that was the opposition was only concerned about second-hand vapor yes and its yeah. effect on people and I thought are you kidding is that all you've got to you know talk about but what got me really really incensed I don't know about you Keith but you know when he went in that deli yes and there were cakes sitting open on the top of the counter. Yes. And he complained because he wasn't allowed to vape in there. They didn't want him to vape in there. And after all, it's a public place and you can vape anywhere. I was livid because, you know, as a smoker, long before the days of vaping, would you ever have dreamed of smoking a cigarette over food like that. No, no. So why should that be a point in the argument? I mean, the, the whole thing was so um, narrow, restrictive. Uh, you know, he had that cigarette, that uh, imitation cigarette in his hand. Yeah. Uh, the blue light, and that was the be end and end all of of, uh, of mm -hmm. vaping. Yeah, you know, and yeah. then and then the debate went on to well, they look like cigarettes and all the rest of it, uh, and there was no mention uh, of of you know the more sophisticated stuff that's around, none Absolutely. at all. So uh, just 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 diving in here, I, I, am I right in thinking then that this was? not a particularly well-researched piece and that it was set up to fail? It certainly wasn't uh, yeah. well-researched. And yes, it could very well have been set up to fail. I think I'm pleased I missed it. Well, so what, what, what went on after that? I, they asked for a vote of whether, you know, this was acceptable, using these things in public places. Uh, and I thought, I'm not going to vote on that. I'm sorry I'm not belittling myself, and I think there would have been a lot of vapors like me. Well, would I have didn't said, vote I'm not either. Well, John Edward Divers just typed into chat that the vote was more a vote against Rod Little, which is fair enough. And apparently there's a few people who don't like his grocery stores either. <laughs> <laughs> Whoops, grocery stores. Sorry about that. And that's a whole new subject, because I want to know where Little's gone. But never mind. Um, I just felt it was not serious at all. It hadn't been looked at at all. We were just being treated as a joke. And referring back to, constantly referring to, much prefer a cigarette. It's not as good as the real thing and all this sort of stuff. And I thought, 
Well, why are you standing there with that? Why are you representing me? D um, Mark Shaw's just typed in that Graham Norton was in there and says he stuck That's up right. for us in a way. He do, did. Do yes, tell, uh, do tell, do tell. He did. What did he say, Chris? He didn't say a great deal, um, but he came up with common sense, is what he was saying, you know? That, you know, surely... Um, it's got to be better than a cigarette type of argument. But he freely admitted he didn't know anything about them, neither did the other guest who's the author of Bridget Jones. Right. Um, she didn't know anything about them. And it's very unfair to bring guests in to comment on something that they haven't been warned about, and that was the feeling we got. Yes. Um, yeah. And ask them to make an opinion. And that's what they did. And what really annoyed me was uh, Matt Baker at the end of that, when he didn't get the answers from the two guests that he wanted, said, well, I don't know about you to Alex, but the whole thing makes me feel uncomfortable. I'm not comfortable with it. That's... And I thought, Pete's Well, he's not a journalist, is he? He's a, no, he's, a, no. he's from Durham, and I thought better of him than that. He's Inton, I think. He's Inton. He's Inton. Oh yeah. my God! He's from Dodge. <laughs> mm. I believe that's where. Oh, he if he's from, from Dodge, well, there you are. I mean, that says it all. Yeah. Anybody from Dodge is thick as two short planks, and apparently he's proved it. So there you go. Um, but it was very disappointing. Yes. You you felt the same, Keith. Yes, you? yes, I did. It it just was completely not representative, in my opinion. Not well researched. Um, it it it, it you know it didn't get uh, e-cigarettes across at all, in my opinion. No. Yes. No. Well, Lament uh, Le Lamentals just said the whole thing was cross television. It's not going to be taken any more seriously than Daily Mail article, which is kind of says it all, doesn't it? Really? Yeah, I'm, I've never seen any of these articles in the in the Daily Mail. You were on about those last week. It's on the Mail Online. I don't know whether they make whether they make the uh, the paper version. Right. But seriously, I mean, if the the fact you've never seen them is probably why your blood pressure is still normal. Right. <laughs> Did you see the one, Dave, about the lady who was asked to leave mother care? I did, yes. And, I mean, what she was using was a very brightly coloured Eagle Vision kit, which looked very acceptable. But, but I could see mother care's point. I mean, A, I wouldn't, if it was me, I wouldn't be smoking in a store, any store. And if I felt the need to vape, it would be stealth. Well, I, as I think as everybody knows by now, because I've trumpeted it loud and long from the rooftops, we've got the new grandson, and I do, nowadays, as the dutiful granddad, make frequent visits into places like mother care. And yeah. when it gets to um, decision time, because... I kind of believe how expensive stuff is for bears. You know, that oh, would yeah. be the very shop you wouldn't attempt to do that, isn't it? Well, out of all shops. You would, you, it's a difficult one. I like, I see it. When, when you sit and look and, you know, you've got, you've got your daughter with you and, and you want to do your best for your family and so on. And she's looking at this pram. And like most blokes, the first thing you do when they're looking at the pram, you go and find the little label and it's just... Uh, yes. <laughs> I don't like the colour of that one, pet. And then the next one, and you have a look at the colour, and nah, that, that'll not suit it. Because you don't know whether you're having a boy or a girl, it's no good getting a blue, and you do all of that when you're looking at the prices. But then you finally have to get to the point where the checkbook's coming out, as it used to be. And you've got to make a decision. And I'm still at the point where, you know, you'd just be sitting there, and this would be really handy for at the VTR, it's just a case of... Um, we'll have the green one so I don't have a problem with it as long as as Chris says you're a bit circumspect about what you're doing but I wouldn't there's no way I would be walking around mother care blowing bloody great clouds exactly. out of exactly. there, there are places where 
I would use an e-cig and not think twice about it. If I'm sat having a cup of coffee in, in a cafe somewhere, there'll be billows. That's fine. If I'm in a pub, well, <laughs> like we were on Friday, I've got no problem there. But there are, there are certain places where you do exercise a little bit of restraint. And that's, that's, and that's all right. one of them. But reading through that piece, apparently she hadn't been told that she couldn't use an e-cig. And no. they, they basically what they'd done was they'd conflated it with, with fags and expected everybody to know. And mm -hmm. she was she was um, either on her way on duty or off duty, whichever way one it was, and she just absent-mindedly took it out and had a drag, and, and wasn't blown anywhere. And, and, I don't know. I, I think it's there are too many people are jumping on this wagon of of yeah. oh we can't have e-cigs being used here, um, probably because of that execrable joint weather spoons. But you know, who am I to say? Yeah, I mean, I can understand her saying, you know, I took it out without thinking. But, but, where the book comes in is, when I first started smoking and I was found out, right, when my parents found out, I got the proverbial lecture off my dad. And the first thing I was told is you never smoke on the streets. Yes. It's not considered ladylike. Yes. You never <clears throat> do it. I was going to say right. Jill's exactly the same. She would never ever smoke while we were walking down it's the street. It's interesting you should say that because my mother was a smoker, and she oh. never ever would smoke outside in the in the street. I mean that that uh, that was it in those days, wasn't it? That's right. It was. Can I just jump in before it screws off? Mm -hmm. Apparently, stagecoach buses have started putting no e-cig stickers on their buses. Really? So have Viva. What? Yeah. I have I have only one word for them. That's it. I'm not even going to say it. That's all I've got to say. Mm -hmm. That's shocking. But sorry to going, interrupt. You know, going back to um, the rules of vaping, of smoking. I'm going to go back to the rules of smoking. From that rule onwards, I was never told any. I just used common sense. And I wouldn't walk into a shop and light a cigarette. I wouldn't do it. And I remember occasions um, when I would have a cigarette and knew I shouldn't have a cigarette. And I did that holding it inside your cupped hand. Yes. You've yes. All, we've all done that, haven't we? Yes. <laughs> you try doing that with a one, three, four. <laughs> yes, but do you remember the, the days when you could, uh, you went upstairs on the bus if you were a smoker, yeah. and you you couldn't see if there was a spare seat, nope. because of all the smoke in the in the uh, uh, on the upper deck of the bus. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Uh, th actually, while we're while we're on about all this, what's coming up in chat now is people talking about if asking if it's okay to vape in various different places and this is, this is an interesting one this th this show is going to go where you take it tonight seriously because i've never uh, oh gothic rocket can you see what gothic rocket just mm -hmm. said chris i can yes. yes i'm not reading that one out no no um <laughs> i've lost my track now he's put it right <laughs> it's why i should never read chat um, yeah, th this whole notion of, of, of asking, I, I look at it from the point of view that there, there is a smoking ban in the UK, but wherever it was that I used to be able to smoke, both legally and morally, and that's the second part is, is quite important, then I don't yeah. have a problem in just using whatever e-cig I've got with me, um, as though there was no ban. And without seeking any permission. It's not as if I'm acting illegally. And if, if you used to be able to smoke there, I cannot see what the problem is. You see, you've got to, you've got to look at this in, in the context of the smoking ban and the over-the-top attitudes of people who don't smoke to those that do. I mean, I remember one occasion standing outside of a supermarket in a queue at a cash machine. This is going back some years, and I had a cigarette in my hand, and there was a woman, in, this was in open air, 
And a woman in front of me had a child and she said quite loudly, uh, move away from this man, um, he, 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 he's smoking. Um, now that to me was just a completely over the top reaction. You, we, we, we're getting exactly the same completely over the top reactions about e-cigs as well. And if, you, if, you, if you think of the like of uh, Stanton Glance, for instance, talking about banning e-cigs anywhere where there's a cigarette ban and people in the States now, we're talking about banning e-cigs, on, uh, banning cigarettes on beaches and then passing laws or trying to pass laws to, to, to lump e-cigs and cigarettes together so you couldn't even use one on a beach. In a bloody howling 48 gale, what yeah. damage is it going to do to anybody? Mm. You know what, it's just... Oh, Craig Cushman, smoking on the toilet is wrong, vaping on the toilet is the future. That's what he said. We've been on that one before. Yes. And I'm going to say what, what Lamental has just said. Glance is such a gobshite. I cannot disagree. But I am going to invite him onto VT Talk. I want him and Martin McKeon at the same time. Yes, we'd like them to be educated gobshites. Yes, educated gobshites are fine. <laughs> we don't mind them at all. Um, have you seen what the time is, Chris? Yes, it is 22 oh, no. minutes, almost 22 and a half past <coughs> the hour, so it is advert time. And we'll, we'll go into the adverts with what Gillis has said. Gillis, oh no. Gillis has said, <laughs> does Keith vape when he's playing with his organ? We'll give you the answer <laughs> right after the break. Super6.co.uk sponsors of The Haze Out. And we is back in the room. That was the smooth transition, apparently. It didn't seem very smooth to me, but never mind. Here we are back on the Hayes Hour on Thursday, the 10th of October in the year of our Lord 2013 and stuff like that. And before the break, we asked the question, does Keith vape when he's playing with his organ? Keith? Uh, <laughs> well, <laughs> what would... would <laughs> would you smoke or would you vape in church? That's that's really the question. Well, it? It, it has to be said. There's a fair few people in chat have already said that they would vape in church. Right. Right. Uh, you know, I always satisfy me craving before the <laughs> service starts <laughs> and immediately after it's finished. Is that but, on a Sunday morning? <laughs> uh, I mean, how, how do I hold this? 
and play at the same time. Ah, and, uh, well, that's... Although yeah. I'm up above, do you know what I mean? Uh, no, I haven't, is the... There you go, that's the answer. So the answer to the question... Although I've had cravings. <coughs> uh, for an easy, while you've been yeah. playing with your organ. Uh, yes. Particularly during a sermon. Yes, Gothic Rocket has just pointed out that you need both hands to play with your organ. And, and of course, your feet as well. Bragging again. Right. We need to... <laughs> <laughs> well, you know that. Yes, I do, uh, I do. You have pedals on an organ. <laughs> oh, just stop it. Otherwise, <laughs> I'll be getting into the mix again. Sorry. About the young fellow from Ghent whose personal oh, uh, electronic nicotine inhalation system was exceedingly bent. Uh, right. To save himself trouble, he shoved it in double. The last line everybody knows. Let's look at some <laughs> kits, shall we? And go to close you up, he can. And this is the kit we're going to look at. Um, it's called a Squape. Capital S, capital Q, U-A-P-E. I don't know why it's called a Squape. I do know it is made, though, in CH, in Switzerland, in Swiss. All right. Yes. And I'm here to tell you, before I even show you through it, it is engineered like a Rolex watch. It is delightful and very, very simple. Well, if it's made in Switzerland, it would be. Uh, you would expect that, wouldn't you? Now, it, it, it's, on a, it's on a base, right? So if I just unscrew the base a little. Fingers out the way, David. Right, there you go. That's the actual scrape part itself. Now, this is metal, but it's coated in a non-conductive surface and it is non-conductive now you'll see if i manage to zoom in a little bit this is david doing what he's not very good at Whoop, there we go um that i've actually got it coiled up already very very easy to coil and the wick just needs to be cut off at the ends there so it doesn't need to go down these little grooves at the side and when it's all assembled this bell would normally be in it fits and you can see it allows the juice just to go up those two little holes and get to the wick. So if you like, it's uh, is that CE3 or CE4 technology? I can never remember what it is. I'll zoom out a little further so you can see what I'm doing next. This bell unit here fits into the top. Now, inside the top, you'll be able to see there is a plastic tank. You can see it's windowed. It's not glass. It's plastic. It probably is not going to be fire and ice resistant. Fire and ice being part of one of the three best things in life, which is uh, a brandy before and a fire and ice after. That was what we said, wasn't it, Chris? That's correct. Yep, three best things in life. And that screws in using the supplied Allen key. And I'm here to tell you the Allen key is actually made in Germany. And this engineering is well over the top. Once you've screwed the bell chimney whatever you want to call it in and it needs to be relatively tight you can see it fits in there quite snugly like that filling is just a case of pouring the juice in down the side until it's up to the top so i shall do that this is you you, you people wonder why i don't do reviews on youtube now you know so i shall just fill it up it takes a good five mils i'm here to tell you and when I say a good five mils, I mean a damn good five mils. It's easier if you've got a snipe nose bottle, I've got to say. It's not the easiest job. And I've managed to get juice into the bell already. It's, that's trying to get it in too fast. That's probably enough. And then all that you need to do is to screw the base on. Now, listen. Look at that. That is smooth as a very, very smooth thing. I have not come across smoother. Seriously, that is really rather pleasant. Move the juice bottle out of the way, David. And that's pretty much it. It comes supplied with a drip tip, um, which is, is quite a nice one. Uh, suits my purposes at any rate. And what mm. I'm going to do, I'll just I'll stick it onto the 134 because I want to talk a little bit about the 134s as well. Um, that coil that's in there is running at 1.8 ohms. Very easy to do, very easy to sort out. Connecting it all up is a piece of cake. Anybody could do this. Keith could do this, couldn't you? Uh, from what I've seen. It's yeah. very, very easy to do, very, very easy to get on with. 
um, and we'll give it a quick blast. Now I've got this set at 7 watts on the 134. And that works rather nicely. Would you like a chuck, young man? And that didn't exactly have uh, an awful long time to get the, the juice through onto the coil. And for once, you don't have to worry about which way up it is. Dave, of questions. Both. Yeah? What's the coating made of? And secondly, where do you get them from? Right, Cloud9 is handling them in the UK, although I, I did buy mine from Switzerland. Um, they are out, but they come out in batches, and I managed to track down um, a shop that's, that's in Switzerland that had some in. Cloud9 are expecting more, and I think they're running around about 115 quid there. But seriously, it is so well built. The... Um, the... Oh, come on, David. The coating, I, I don't actually know what the coating is. I couldn't tell you what it is. I do know that it's baked on to whatever the metal is that the um, the coil assembly sits on. And it's tough as old boots. And the bell is covered in the same stuff. You can't scratch it. I've tried. Daft as I am. I actually had a go at it. Screwdriver slipped on. Because on, I've recoiled it about four times now. Just to play with it and see what it will do. And it's tough as, as uh, old boots it is. You're not going to yeah, go through very it. Very nice. What are you finding with it, Keith? You're liking that? Yes, I am. Yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> no, no. Oh, dear. Not, oh, oh, dear. Mm. It's all right, is it? Mm. Look at that, eh? Keith giving it larger. He's enjoying that. Yeah. Yeah, Steffi's just made the point um, that the plastic tank is the one bit that lets it down and it does I'd, I'd far rather it was glass i've got to be honest um <coughs> glass wood oh i mean the engineering is superb everything fits perfectly exactly as it should it's 22 mils uh in diameter so that means it'll fit on everything that's made to the 22 mil diameter and there's just a slight bulge where they i'll, I'll have to go to close you up you can for this but you'll you'll see the knurling here there's, you can just make out a slight bulge. It'll be half a mil where that knurling is that takes it away from the 22 mils. But in all, in all seriousness, um, it looks absolutely splendid. It's definitely not a fingerprint magnet, but it would <coughs> have been a lot better with a quartz or glass tank in there. Spare tanks are available. I think they're about 15 quid and you get a, a, a dowel to push them in with. I don't know how you get the old one out. I've only had it a couple of days. Um, I'm going to uh, give it some laldi and I'll give you a more in-depth opinion of it next week. But so far, from what I've seen, th this, this is working really well. Um, somebody, is, Paul XB8, has just come in and said it's a ceramic, no, very boring said it's a ceramic coating used in industrial solenoid valves, apparently. And Paul XB8, who apparently is extremely learned, has said it's polytetrafluoroethane. I thought that. That's easy for him to see. <laughs> or Poly as <coughs> says, Emetal Ceramic. Say that again, Chris. Emetal Ceramic. Emetal. Emetal. Em aluminium, media youth says. So we've got several <coughs> definitions. In, 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 <coughs> let's, it's, it's magic. Whatever it's it is, it's magic because it, it actually works. It's, it's not paid EFA. Um, yes, I could read that, Vince. <laughs> um, but it, it's, it's, it certainly works. It's very, very easy to use. It, it, I mean, it just is. It, it arrived unwicked, unready. It came with uh, some wick, um, a spare O-ring, two spare terminal screws, which are both thumb screws and chisel screw, chisel screwdriver. Flat, what do you call the damn things? Flathead screwdrivers um, and some some wire. So you, you're ready to go out of the box. Um, beautifully packaged as well, it has to be said. Not in a presentation box or anything like that because they just get thrown out. Uh, but very securely packaged. Um, what, I'm, what I might well do is I might do a Karen, a, a Darren, a Daz, DJ Bobo. And I might get uh, or ask Sav very, very nicely with a pretty please 
whether or not she'll make me up some fire and ice that's not quite as heavy on the menthol and I'm going to see how long it'll take to crack, crack the tank if indeed it will uh, just just so everybody gets to know um, that and the fact that I'm feeling daring because as we said three best things in life brandy before and some fire and ice after not right Keith if you say so that was what no, Chris said Thomas Bass says it's not fire and ice resistant so it's a no go for me well we'll find out we will find out but that's that's the scrape I've been uh, waiting for it coming and there's a few people have said it's brilliant and I've got to say I am enjoying it and we'll, we'll see how it goes the 134 got to come back a lot because it's as you know I've got two of them uh, I've got the black and silver and the straight silver and these things are fabulous um, again so easy to use they're not letting me down at all the the thing i really like because it's got no display if you're and i, I like a genesis tank as everybody knows and occasionally as you know um you get the odd daftness happens with your coil and you'll get a short it switches itself off completely off and you can give it the three blasts and get it back on again press the button and if it's still shorted switches itself off um, at first I thought there was something gone wrong and then I took the atomizer off that had shorted and tested it found the short put another one on and neither of the 134s flattered at that I really do like these um, a lot and so anybody that thinks I might be giving one away to anybody think again not going to happen it's really nice I don't care how deep your pocket is it's not happening and I've got to say Considering that I didn't like box mods, the same is very true of the VTR as well. Um, that's been serving me really rather nicely over the last week since I got it. Um, and I'm particularly impressed by these uh, 30Ss. What do you call them again, Chris? What, the, what, the tank? What, the tank? Oh, uh -huh. right, yeah. I don't know, you're asking the wrong person. <laughs> yeah. I clear. Thank you, Midge Dog. F and femoral and moonlit i clear 30 yes yes i do like these it, it's working very very well and at quite low wattage as well um i mean it's had a week of fairly hefty humpage off me um and and it's doing really well so vtr big thumbs up 134 big thumbs up i, I can't wait to see what else in it can come out with um because it all seems to be rather good stuff but the mental wants to know how it compares to the iClear 30 in terms of draw. Um, the draw is around about the same, I have to say. Uh, but it seems to be producing better. And I've had not a dry hit at all. Not one. None. Zero. Nada. Um, it's not even getting gurgly when you get down on the juice, which I've had a couple of times with an ordinary iClear 30. And it wicks like an absolute champ. Which, that's, that's the, the, let's go back to close you we come. That's, that's the function of these holes um, and the wicks being on the inside of these holes. Now, I don't know whether you'll be able to see. Um, where's me zoomy anything gone? Forgive the mess. I'm going to try and zoom in on this to see if you can. You'll just be able to see the juice in the holes. And you can see that there's no juice, you know, the, the, the level of the juice in the tank. But you can see the whole of that centre stem is full of juice above the level of the juice that's in the tank. And that is aiding wicking something chronic. You can really, really smack the backside out of these things. You can turn them up pretty much as high as you like and they're working exceptionally well. Um, I really do like them. I really do like the iClear 30S for that reason. They're, they're, they're good. Was there anything else, Chris? Yeah, Lamental wants to know, will the 30 fit on the VTR as well? Um, easy way to find out. I just need to find a 30 if I've got one handy. If I haven't, I'll uh, I'll nip out during the adverts <coughs> and find one and I'll bring it <coughs> in and stick it on. Is I think Keith it does. using one there? Oh, yes, you are. Can I just right. borrow your at the manoeuvre later, please? Yes. Well I've spotted, Keith. I'll let you unscrew it because I'll have to unscrew this one. I shouldn't be let out, should I? Well, while you're doing all that screwing... Pardon? <laughs> Lamental asked a question earlier on. 
um, which perhaps you can answer while you're doing all this. He said, I was wondering whether someone could clearly explain the circular argument, cigarettes, NRT, cigarettes once again, as I'm sure you would word it a lot better than I. Um, I'll certainly try and we'll, we'll come back. And there it is. That's an iClear 30 uh, attached to the VTR. And as you can see, it fits absolutely perfectly. Not a problem at all. Ordinary iClear 30 fitted to the VTR. Um, the circular argument of, of smoking NRT, smoking NRT, smoking NRT. In terms of, in terms of why does it work that way? In very simple terms, NRT is designed to fail. The amount of nicotine that it delivers to the bloodstream is so small because all it's meant to do is alleviate cravings. And even then, only just. The whole idea of using NRT is to get you off nicotine altogether. Now, you'll quite often hear the figures bandied about that 65 to 70% of smokers want to quit. That patently isn't true. Because if they wanted to quit, they would. What is actually the case, I feel, and this is my opinion, but it's backed up by some very eminent scientists and uh, epidemiologists and even some tobacco controllers, will tell you that 65 to 70% of smokers think they ought to quit. And there's a big difference between thinking you ought and wanting to. But if you get nagged enough, you'll go to Boots and you'll get your patches or your gums or that horrible plastic tampon and you will make what they call a quit attempt, which means you are attempting to become nicotine abstinent. You don't actually want to, but you think you should. Unfortunately, if you don't want to, you <coughs> won't. So the tobacco companies go, that's all right, because we've got a 20% share in GlaxoSmithKline or whichever one. They've got a share and they're supplying the nicotine to them as well. So they're not that bothered. They're still making some money out of you. The NRT companies, the pharmaceutical companies go, yes, brilliant. We've got them for, well, month, two months, three months, six months at the outside. Because by six months, most people have fallen off the wagon. And they get their little bit of money out of you, which is roughly what you would spend on fags per day. And then something happens at some point in that six months and you go back to the fags. So there you go. Quit, attempt, fail and smoke. Quit, attempt, fail and smoke. Quit, attempt, fail and smoke. And that is the circle of revenue that goes round and round and round. One of the few things that breaks that circle is the e-cig. And the reason it breaks the circle is because you're not making a quit attempt. E-cigs are designed to substitute for your smoking habit. That's all they are meant to do. They're not meant to help you become nicotine abstinent. They are simply meant to give you a cleaner form of doing what you were already doing. And so that cycle of quit attempt smoke is broken because you pick up an e-cig, you find what you like and you stick with it. And the tobacco companies don't like it and neither do the pharmaceutical companies. Simple as that. Does that answer it, Chris? That answers it very well. That Second it ad break, well Dave. Put. We'll take an ad break, sorry. Very Keith. well put. Thank you. It, it, the, the, the whole business of wanting to stop and really I should stop. Mm. I mean, I think that that's, that's a very succinct way of putting it. I look at it from the point of view of I know I should have hoovered the new carpets. Jill's not coming back until tomorrow. I didn't want to, so I'll do it tomorrow because I've got to. Yes. But that doesn't mean I'm going to do it on Saturday. Yes. And that's exactly where it's at. If you really want to do something, you'll do it. If you think you should, but you don't really want to, you won't. We'll be back in two minutes. Don't go anywhere.
6. Sponsors of the Hayes Hour. And we're back in the room live. Disco Des, you are in trouble. For those you of you watching are. on video on demand, he said, I thought there was going to be a special guest in video tonight. Cat is saying you're not special. I am special. I'm very special. She is. Everybody tells me I'm special. Yes, we've known for donkey's ages she, she's special, aren't you, pet? <laughs> you can tell I she's am, upset, yeah. can't you? Oh, aye. Yes. I'm upset. She yes. is upset. Yes. I mean, and if he comes to the knees, meet he's in trouble. Oh, a sensitive soul. She is very. And Des, there you are. If you come up to the knees, mate, you're in trouble. I would come if I were you. Last time I got a good eye off her, it was brilliant. Oh, and she makes sure the bruises don't show, don't you, Chris? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> yes, special Max Headroom guest tonight. Vince Brindle said it's cut from Red Dwarf. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, Lena Marie Popper Torson is is discussing the uh, the various other benefits of using e cigs, which I'm not actually going to repeat at this moment in time. It might not be a brilliant idea. Um, don't take any offence at that, but it's kind of not the stuff that uh, that that we want to be broadcasting just at the minute. Uh, but nevertheless, it's all good stuff. Talking about um, all good stuff, you've been going to bricks and mortar stores in the Metro Centre, haven't you, Keith? Oh yes, yes. Now, y y you mentioned earlier about mother care and prams. Okay. Uh, you, you, Vicky's not pregnant, is she? No, 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 no. But um, oh, a, a similar sort of scenario, I was taken to the Metro Centre. All right. Against to, your will? Uh, to, uh, to look at curtains. Oh, God, no. Yes, yes. Now, uh, for those who don't know, the Metro Centre is at Gateshead. <laughs> it's one of the largest shopping centres in Europe. Um, you know, you could spend a week there, couldn't you, and not see all the shops. I could spend a week there and only see the Apple Store. Well, you know, once you get through Marks and Spencers, that always takes two hours. But that's by the by. Oh, I thought, well, while I'm place. there, I'm going to seek out this the VIP shop, mm -hmm. um, which I did. I managed to sort of move away from the curtains for. A, a few minutes. Did you take Vicky with you? No, she sat on a seat at the entrance to this particular mall, uh, impatiently waiting. Oh no! Uh, no, she didn't. She didn't go. Um, as you know, it started off as a as a kiosk. In, yes. In in the, in the metro centre. Barra. Um, and I got the impression that. Um, it had caused some controversy um, in actually setting up in the in the metro centre. However, um, they must have got over that, and now they've opened this shop in what was the uh, the antiques village. And what an impressive shop it was! Really, uh, oh, very modern, very well lit, uh, very inviting. Um, so I went in and introduced myself. Um, uh, th th there was a table with chairs around it, and opposite the shop uh, was a well-known uh, uh, coffee house. Costa. Uh, yes. <coughs> well, I wasn't going to name it. And uh, people were obviously uh, taking their coffee and sitting down, sampling the various juices. And um, I'm listening. According to the uh, proprietor, the the lady who uh, was running the store, it's doing very well. Um, as I say, I, I didn't imagine for a minute that it would be um, uh, such a modern, uh, well-equipped store. Uh, but you've been quite impressed by what you saw. Yes. Uh, I'm just just, just holding that in picture so that uh, the person that asked can say, yes, I do. Still use me, Gigi. Um, I sampled one or two juices while I was in there. Uh, one that particularly took me fancy was either blackberry or a blueberry. And I promised that I'd be going to... Uh, 
the galleries to uh, to get some to buy stuff. Well, I do buy stuff occasionally. <laughs> Not all. God, yeah. it's a hell of a temperature. Yeah, you're right. yeah well, oh, it's God. Yeah, probably Please. indoors of something coming on. So yeah, well worth a visit. Well, I shall I shall have to have a wander who, through. Yes, I think you should. I shall have mm. to have a wander through. I'll try and take the camera, in fact, and uh, see what it's all about. Were their prices any different from the ones in in Washington? No. 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 Oh, that's good. That's good. Um, there were one or two questions came up while you were talking through that uh, about various different points of things about medicinal claims and all of that kind of stuff um, just to fill everybody in uh, if you are on twitter and if you're not you should be you would have seen that frederick reyes who's the uh, shadow rapporteur on the aldi committee had posted up a blog today it's in french but you can google translate it she's a belgian mep um, and i would recommend that you go and read that she has said that she is going to be keeping a very very close eye on the proceedings in the negotiations that are going on because she doesn't trust that non-med regs will come through um, and also in terms of um, how we deal with our own governments we do need to be talking to them and making sure they understand that these are not medicines um, and therefore we're going to have to be very clear careful about medicinal claims and even if it goes through as it stands we still are going to have to be very careful about medicinal claims um, because they can be done apparently by proxy which is why on certain forums you will find if anybody starts a thread saying something along the lines of I quit using e-cigs that will be deleted extremely quickly because if it's on a vendor forum and somebody says they've quit using e-cigs that is counted as a medicinal claim by proxy and apparently, according to the FDA, and I'm, gonna, I'm going back two, two years now, they sent out a letter to various different vendors saying that if those vendors were associated with a forum and on that forum quit claims were made, they could and possibly would count those as being medicinal claims by proxy for every vendor associated with that forum just something to bear in mind i know it's wrong i do i know it's wrong but unfortunately that's the game that we're having to play we're having to use language in a way it's not meant to be used using the definitions of the people that would govern us not something we can help but that's what we've got to do and it's a great shame um because it's it well it's just wrong it is actually just wrong because in my opinion, and I'm, I'm, I'll say this now, I don't think NRT is a medicine either. I think it's, it just isn't. Um, and it's only being made a medicine as a money-making scheme by the pharmaceutical companies because the disease of tobacco dependence or tobacco addiction didn't exist until they invented it to sell their execrable products. Chris, you got anything to add to that? Basically, what I've just typed in there is we need to keep in mind we've won the first battle, but the war is far from over. Absolutely right. How I'm phrasing it these days, and how we probably should have been phrasing it from the start, is I use this as a substitute for my smoking habit. Correct. It's a substitute yes. for my smoking habit. That is not a medicinal claim. My mother didn't raise any quitters. And I don't like the Q word because it gets us in bother. So in fact, we're go. going to have to ban that word, I think. Is that what we're going to have to do? We're Wait, going to ban that word. Let's make a start and ban the Q word. See, I don't, I don't like bans, I have to say. Neither I do I, but that word deserves it. It's caused us a lot of trouble. It has, it has. I leave that to your better judgment, Chris. <laughs> yes. For Margot, you can type in there what you like. That, unfortunately, is a medicinal claim, what you have just typed. Yeah. I'm sorry, but it is. And that's how it's being seen by those who would govern us. And that's not my choice. It, it just is what it is. Um, and unfortunately, it can cause problems. 
and I know Famago, I know it's bull crap. We can't challenge the definition. It is what it is. Once we've got rid of all this, then we can go after it. I know, I understand that you're angry about that. I'm angry about it too. But unfortunately, the rules have already been made and we've got no option. We've got to go down that road. I'm sorry. We've got to pick our fights, as Sav's just said in chat. And that fight is not one that we can win at the minute. We've got to concentrate on the important stuff. That's, that's just the way it is. Um, and I think that's probably where I'm going to leave that one. Chris, you got anything to add? No, just to say, remember guys, we know it's not fair, but they don't play fair. And we have to learn this. Yeah. We play by their rules, not ours. Un unfortunately, that's true. They've made the rules and we've got to play uh, by them. However, let's move on to some greater things. DJ Bobo, Karen Johnson, is about to go live on RY4 Radio. He starts at 10 o'clock spinning the wheels of steel. And uh, I'd love if you all went along and had a listen to him. Has he got giveaways tonight, Chris? I think he may have. And I think he's got jingles and all, which he's quite proud of his jingles. He's, he's, got, he's got jingles, he's got giveaways, he's got competitions, he's got prizes, he's got all kinds of things, including blue tartan pyjamas. <laughs> <laughs> So head on over to RY4 Radio uh, as soon as this show's finished and have a listen to DJ Bobo, Karen Johnson. Uh, wonderful girl. Get a bloke. Um, and I'm sure you'll enjoy what he says there. Don't forget to tune in on Sunday night when we've got Team Talk, have we? Um, we don't know yet. It's planned for Mr Kitson's return, but ah. it depends if he's back in time. Indeed, because he, he could be delayed in his flight. So Tuesday night, it'll either be Dave's Tattle Box or Team Talk does Dave's Tattle Box or Tattle Dave's on Monday Tattles night <laughs> <laughs> on Monday night we've got Tin Your Tip uh, with Gary Dibley and the mod master that is Mark uh, doing naked modding with uh, blood and guts and bones and stuff like that on Tuesday night Marco's back isn't he? Yes. Yeah Marco's back for Vapor Scene followed by DE Talk, our German language version, and also Rob on RY4 Radio. It's a bump a night on Tuesday night. Three things that you can watch and listen to. Brilliant, that. Wednesday mm -hmm. night will be VT Talk, when I'm hoping Martin McKay will be with us. The offer's open, it's there. If he says he's going to do it, he'll come and do it. That'll be brilliant. And then next Thursday night, Keith and I will be back with Collie. Cross between Cat and Holly in uh, probably in attendance as well um but until then to one and all can i just say thank you for spending the last hour with us i hope you've enjoyed it half as much as we have and if you have enjoyed it half as much as we have then we'll have enjoyed it twice as much as you until next time <laughs> do you <laughs> well that's logic <laughs> Until next time, vape on, vape hard, and nil carborundum illegitimi. From all of us here, a very good night to you all. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good it's, night. Number, it's number seven. Good night. <laughs>